wait, wait. There is another Far Cry. I have to make one of their weapons. Yes, Ubisoft actually brought out another version, the version 6 of the Far Cry franchise. And I have been making weapons for that show several times. I made like a double bow for Far Cry Primal and then I made a saw blade launcher, really hefty thing, a circular saw blade shooter for uh, Far Cry New Dawn. And now it's time for revolution! <laughs> because Far Cry 6 is all about revolution on the island of Yara in the Caribbean. The game will be released on October 7th, 2021. <laughs> and um, if you order now, just a few days before it's supposed to come out, then you actually can still get the pre-order uh, stuff. And that includes a very cool CD launcher called Discos Locos. It's basically a full auto handheld CD launcher that plays music while gently killing the opponents. <laughs> and that's the one that I want to copy. Well, I had an idea to just basically build a small, like, football launcher with two moving wheels that would accelerate it. But then the Hacksmith, uh, Bogdan from the Hacksmith gang, actually built one exactly like this, but a million times better than I would have done it. I have to say, that's a mighty impressive video that he uploaded several months ago, actually. Uh, because the weapon looks just like the one in the game. It actually works well. It's full automatic. The technical efforts that Bogdan invested is just amazing. I mean, he uses solid works and he built in a, a full Arduino mini computer to control everything. He's using high tech small motors that spin incredibly fast and put it all together you know, just in a masterful way. I have to say, my version would have come out much worse. Uh, so it makes no sense for me to try to go down the same road. I have to do something different. So I thought about what can I do better than the Hacksmith? Well, the weapon that the Hacksmith built has one serious disadvantage. It is weak. <laughs> it's not a weapon, really. I mean, uh, if you, if you want to do a revolution, you must have a weapon that can seriously hurt your opponent. Uh, at least render him like unconscious or something if you're not killing him. And yes, it's shooting very fast, but of course the lightweight projectile loses speed quickly. The Hexmith was just barely able to almost cut a banana into half, cut an apple into half too, but that is definitely not powerful enough to really, you know, do more than irritating your opponent. So it is a wonderful toy, but it is a toy. And that, of course, is nothing that we want to do here on the Slingshot channel. Plus, plus, it is highly questionable if, you know, people doing a revolution in living in primitive quarters would really use like Arduino technology and all this to build a weapon like this. Uh, they also would not have access to all these high-tech motors and so on. So I think it must be fairly low-tech with stuff that you can really find on a wrecked island like Yara and uh, that you can put together with tools that would be available to you in such a situation. And um, what the Hacksmith has built is uh, wonderful, but not really realistic in a scenario like in Far Cry 6. And this begins with the ammo. So that is a compact disc, blank, brand new. And as you see, it's fairly lightweight, although it is a little misleading. I mean, this weighs like 15 grams, which means it's almost as heavy as a crossbow bolt. You know, just, just, you know, but a crossbow bolt would probably be 50% heavier. But, but it, it's not super lightweight, but it's, as you see, it's, it's not solid. It's wobbly, you know, and uh, definitely it will also shatter into pieces if it hits something solid, which, which may be good, but I don't know. But anyway, this is not practical to really hurt someone since it's not sharp. And if you want to really cause damage with something that is not sharp, you have to really apply blunt trauma. And then we need momentum for this. That's what we really need to, you know, stun someone. So my idea is to just simply take some glue and glue four of them together. And then they weigh 60 grams, like three times uh, as much as a crossbow bolt. So that it will have serious momentum and oomph. And also when you glue them together, the hope is that they will lose this kind of flexibility because they form a solid block. 
And this is what one of these things now look like. As you see, it's, it's a lot thicker now, of course, and it has lost that flexibility. It is really like a solid form. It's just glued together with a little bit of CA glue. And actually, for making 25 of these, I need a, a small bottle of uh, CA glue, so it's not expensive. And I think CA glue would even be, uh, you know, something that you can retrieve on Yara. So, what are my requirements? What is the challenge? <laughs> so, I, we need to build something that shoots cities with a high rate of fire, made from stuff and with uh, tools that you can actually find on an island in the Caribbean. So, then also it must be dangerous, it must be able to stun someone and cause a lot more damage than the uh, toy that the hacksmith made. So, it must also have a laser sight and it must also uh, definitely play music while shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so these are six, six challenges that we have to solve. Let me show you what I came up with. <laughs> the Far Cry 6 CD launching bow. <laughs> with integrated music player and laser. <laughs> Let me show you its features. <laughs> yeah, I really started by thinking how can we launch a heavy object with enough power on an island uh, like Yara. Well, I think that, you know, found these old bow limbs from an old recurve bow. That's like a typical sports bow that you can find anywhere. And this is a 60 pound version, so it's fairly powerful. And I think that even on an island like Yara, you would find archery equipment, basic archery equipment. Plus this was really not an expensive bow. What I had to make is I had to make an entirely new riser, um, since of course I'm shooting completely different projectiles. And since I need a really, really wide arrow wrist, quote unquote, I had to put the handle underneath. Like so. And then of course I have a stack of CDs that are fed from above and it's shooting the lowest one actually. And as you see I put in like aluminum rails here that make sure that the CD cannot fall out of the slot. Which also is the, one of the reasons why I'm using four CDs because the CD stack that I'm shooting needs to be thicker than the string of course, otherwise I could not use rails. Yeah and then of course I added a small music player. Uh, so I can play music while doing this because of course these CDs will never play again uh, and certainly not after I shot them. And I also included a laser which in Germany is legal since this is a bow. It would be illegal to attach it to a crossbow but to a bow that's fine. And it's actually a laser that I uh, like borrowed from one of my Fenris bows. <laughs> and of course it's a sliding Legolas so this means that it slides back and forth. Um, and um, this makes it really easy to repeat and gives me a fairly high rate of fire. Of course the uh, rate of fire is not as high as the weapon that the Hacksmith built, but don't forget that I'm shooting four CDs at once. And that counts, doesn't it? <laughs> so first we now want to find out how far these discs fly. Now I'm giving them a spin, otherwise they wouldn't fly stable at all. And I've done this by adding a rubber strip here that actually makes it spinning a little bit like a hop up in an, in an airsoft gun so that the CDs will actually spin uh, and uh, fly halfway straight. Now of course it is to be expected because if, if, if you shoot a flat object like a CD, even when it spins it will fly straight for a while and then drift off into one of the directions. There are some crazy uh, laws of physics thing behind it. You can also see this in the Hacksmith. But here the heavier uh, projectiles help, so it's flying more straight than one of the Hacksmith uh, projectiles. <laughs> it disappeared into the woods. There actually was a huge problem that I had to solve when designing this. And this is how do I get the, the string from going underneath my projectile? when I do this, because that's not automatic. See, the, uh, the, now the CD, the lowest CD stack, is just in the, way, in the way of the string and it would actually jam against it while I need it to slip under it so that it can then 
and then just be grabbed by the release here. Well, what I've done is I've added this little lever. And this lever actually, when I press it, it lifts the front of the stack up. So when I press it, I can get underneath the stack with my string. And then I can push it back and engage the action. So a very simple method uh, and it works fine. Yeah, you can see this here. See, when I press the lever, the little nose gets out. One more shot, noch ein Schuss. Bang. <laughs> I think we passed the reach test. They're flying really far. <laughs> <laughs> Much more far than in the game, I think. In any case, you could see in the game that the wielder of the Discos Locos was actually shooting at someone that was probably, I would say, anything between 8 and 10 meters distant. And let's see if that distance is something that we can really use to hit. Uh, so we are going to shoot at the archery uh, target, which is about as broad as the uh, shoulders of an average uh, governmental soldier. <laughs> Ah, discos locos. <laughs> Interesting to see what kind of a dent it cost in the brand new archery mat. Okay, one more try. Noch ein Versuch. I think it is pretty clear that this weapon is accurate enough and uh, I think I mastered that part of the challenge. Now the Hexsmith was shooting at fruit to test the effectiveness of his weapon. So we will do the same to get a direct comparison. So I have uh, bought a lot of fruit and I think the supermarket cashier now believes that I have turned into a vegetarian. <laughs> In any case, uh, we we'll start with banana. I will be shooting at fairly close distance so that I hit the target. And I know now a lot of people will say, yeah, but you need to take a longer distance to compare. I don't think that they lose much speed on a few meters. In any case, uh, yeah, call it a flaw. Then it is a flaw. <laughs> but I still need to hit it someday. <laughs> As you can easily see, it caused major havoc amongst the banana. <laughs> Next, watermelon. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, as you see, the Imagine Dragons definitely caused some damage on the watermelon. <laughs> Next, pineapple. Yeah, that was also major impact from sweet little pink here <laughs> into the pineapple. And now apples. Just one disc actually butchered several of the apples. These are those that I could find. Mm. Ah, still tasty. <laughs>
Okay, one more shot into the whole collection, everything that's left. <laughs> well, this time it cut the pineapple pretty much into half. <laughs> So, is this deadly? I don't think so. I think it's more comparable, let's say, with a bean bag to stun people. Maybe a little more dangerous because of the sharper edges. Uh, but I don't think it's a lethal weapon. But I think more practical than what the Hacksmith, what Bogdan had built. So we still need to find out how fast I can shoot this thing. And therefore we will shoot two times in a row and see if it's fast enough to be called a repeater. Well, that was pretty quick. <laughs> so, what is the verdict on this weapon? <laughs> well, let's look at the original challenges. Yes, I think it can be made on an island because I did not use anything extra, anything special. And I think you can find archery, leftover stuff, even on an island like Yara. It also does play music. It does have a laser. Uh, it is, it has the uh, accuracy that we wanted, it has the shot frequency, I think, uh, and it also certainly has the looks, plus it also is a dangerous, if not lethal, weapon. Much more dangerous, I think, than the one that the Hacksmith built. So I think, basically, I did master the challenge. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. In any case, if I compare my weapon with the weapon that the Hacksmith built, I still think his one is better. <laughs> His one is so hot with the uh, looks and the feel and the full auto and everything. So I really have to say congratulations Bogdan and the Hacksmith because I think you won this little uh, unofficial contest that I didn't invite you to. <laughs> I, I invited myself, sorry for that. And keep in mind, super cool game. I really have to say that the, the entire landscaping, the detail that went into this island where you can freely move is really impressive so i think it's it's the best game that i've seen forever <laughs> i've never seen a, a game that has more detail and more story plot and so on and so i i really think you should get it <laughs> because i will definitely spend a few hours playing it and i did put all the links to the game down there so libertad <laughs> i think that was a fun episode and I hope you do too, because that's it for today. Wah, bang! Thanks and <laughs> bye bye! <laughs>